Blood Red Sky is about a vampire who flies to New York to find a cure, but the plane is hijacked by a group of terrorists along the way. It's kind of like snakes on a plane, but with the luckiest, dumbest kid in the world. It opens with a bunch of soldiers preparing for a plane to land, and this guy giving instruction to someone who is doing a really crappy job of landing the plane. This kid uses a parachute to get out and a bunch of soldiers pick him up. And then this dude pops up and he's missing a hand for some reason. Inside the base, one of the soldiers is trying to get the kid to talk, but he's not saying anything. It then cuts to Nadia putting on a wig, and the kid from earlier tracking bags into an airport. Wait, did they just show the end of the movie in the beginning? Why would they do that? Anyway, I guess she's staying at a hotel and her son Alias is at the airport alone. Yeah, that's great parenting. That night she goes to the airport, so I'm guessing Alias has been there alone for hours? Oh look, she has medicine of some sort. I wonder what that's for. Alias explains to Farid, you know, the terrorist from earlier, that they're going to New York so his mother can get a blood transfusion. This movie is originally in German but is dubbed over in English and this kid sounds awful. He sounds like a robot trying to show emotion. She's taking her medicine, but there's a doctor in America who can help her. See what I mean? Anyway, they finally get on the plane with a lot of suspicious looking people. So now this nightmare flight can begin. We then get this flashback with Nadia and her husband, who I'm sure is completely still alive. Well, the car broke down in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere, and he's going off on his own to find help. So I'm gonna assume this is where he dies. But first, back at the plane, this guy's whining about the internet being down. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but that happens. We're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Seriously, what the hell? And some drunk guy yelling at a flight attendant. So a couple air marshals step in, and the flight attendant stabs one, and this drunk guy holds the other one to find out where the third marshal is. After that, this guy starts repeatedly stabbing him like an absolute psycho. Because that's not gonna cause a commotion at all. Well, I'm starting to think this might not be a real flight attendant. What's wrong with this guy? Seriously, why did they even bring him? Then he goes out covered in blood and announces the hijacking. And one of the pilots is working with them. How long have they been planning this if two of the airline employees are part of it and they somehow got onto the same flight? By the way, they have a UV light that completely isn't here just for plot convenience. This stupid kid then gets the bright idea to hide in the cargo bay as if they wouldn't find them there. And he makes a run for it. So Nadia goes after him and Psycho shoots her. Good job, kid. Back to the flashback, Nadia's husband is taking forever, so she decides to take their infant son to go looking for him. She goes into this creepy abandoned building and gets chased by a monster. I'm not gonna feel sorry for whatever happens to her. And she finds her dead husband and gets bit by this thing. So now the dumb stuff can begin. Because she's still alive and goes into the cargo bay. There's also a hijacker down there, and he goes to check out a noise and finds her eating a dog. What is wrong with this movie? And then she attacks him. So now she's growing vampire teeth, even though she didn't when she drank blood earlier, but I guess the medicine prevents that somehow. I'm not even going to begin to try to figure that one out. She then lets the big dog out so that when the others find him, they blame the dog and shoot it. Why does this movie hate dogs? Anyway, Nadia needs someone to turn the plane back around, so she goes to the passengers and finds someone who can. Then Psycho finds her medicine and that she's still alive. So they try to get her to open the door to the cockpit by threatening passengers, and they ask the craziest one of them all to find one and then get upset when he chooses a little girl. I don't know what they were expecting, why did they even bring him? Well, it worked. Kind of. So they all run away, except for Psycho, who watches this guy turn into a vampire. I'm pretty sure he knows what's going on by now. She's a vampire. Well, someone wants to become a vampire. She wants to get away from the sun. Let's give her some. Oh look, it's that convenient UV light again. Nadia then decides, since there's still five of them left, now is a good time for her to take her medicine and lose all her vampire powers. It then flashes back again to her dealing with her vampirism. She goes back to the creepy house and finds a bunch of research and this guy who tries to shoot her. Back on the plane again, she's all messed up and this guy comes back upstairs. Wasn't the medicine supposed to turn her back, or I guess not? What is it supposed to do? Either way, Psycho uses the UV light to knock her out and then takes a sample of her blood. This dumb kid, why is this kid even here? This dumb kid acts like he's going to shoot him but instead waits until after Psycho grabs the gun and then shoots out a window. Now, just to cause more issues, the plane is running out of oxygen. 
Why don't we just have it start on fire while we're at it? Because of this, there's this whole scene of people suffocating and a terrorist getting into the cockpit. Does she not need to breathe, yet she's clearly breathing? What is she breathing if there's no oxygen? Anyway, they're bringing the plane down and this guy gets smashed for being an asshole. Nadia finds Psycho in this bulletproof car and can't get to him while he injects himself with her blood. Yep, he wants to become a vampire. So while he's spazzing out, she pours alcohol into this hole and starts the car on fire. Okay, when I said, why don't we just start the plane on fire, I was joking. It then flashes back for what I hope is the last time and she kills the old vampire, finds the medicine she's been taking, and burns the house down. Hang on, how has this amount lasted all these years, or did she get a prescription for it? Is this how the doctor found a way to cure her? Is he even aware of what her actual illness is? Are vampires that common? What is the logic and reason behind this entire movie? Whatever, these guys come down here, and since Psycho is still alive, even though fire is one of vampire's main weaknesses, he bites whatever this guy's name is, so now he's gonna turn into a vampire too. Nadia goes back upstairs, somehow gets caught on this hatch and gets shot, and everyone sees her, freaks out, and runs to the back of the plane. And they all start grabbing weapons to kill her with, including Fareed, who's been protecting her son this entire time and should know that she's not a complete monster. Hey, kid! What's up with your mother? What's wrong with her? She doesn't have leukemia. I never said that! Where did he get that she had leukemia? After they attack her and her stupid son stops it, she remembers that there's another vampire downstairs. So she goes to trap him and for aid helps, but somehow gets his hand caught in the door and gets bit. Seriously, it literally looked like he did this on purpose. So they lock them in and Nadia cuts Farid's hand off, even though it should have been too late because others started turning immediately after getting bit. After they're trapped, this guy is desperately trying not to get bit and is crying for help. Just remember that. Don't fight him! What is with this stupid kid getting involved with everything and how has he not been bit yet? I hate this kid so much because he serves no purpose. How has Nadia done all this and is still somewhat in control when everyone else is in full vampire mode? So I guess everything is fine now and they're going back to Germany. Well, turns out he's gonna die from his injuries and there's nothing they can do about it. So he decides, you know what's a great idea? Letting the vampires out and trying to convince them to bite him. Remember, this jackass had one trying to bite him like 5 minutes ago and he cried about it. Yeah. He deserves to die. So everyone's back to panicking again and all the main characters are conveniently in the cockpit. They then decide to just blow up the whole plane, but first they have to get the remote detonator from the back of the plane but can't get to it because this vent is too small. So instead Nadia is going to sacrifice herself to detonate it from the inside. Alias then decides he's going to go get the remote and somehow gets past all the adults without any of them being able to grab him. And this kid, by some miracle, makes it to the back and knows exactly who to look for and where it is. Then he gets trapped under a car just so his mom has to go rescue him. But first, she just decides to kill this guy. I get he was a terrorist, but what the hell? And after some dumb fight, Psycho decides instead of killing the one problem he has on this entire plane, he's gonna go after some kid who doesn't even matter. And Alias blows the door open, but yet none of them get sucked out of the plane. Nadia has to push him. But he's still hanging on, so Farid has to turn the doorway into the sun, but conveniently stops just before the sun hits Nadia. They then have the scene of them not getting sucked out of the plane. This kid weighs like 50 pounds, come on. And we're back at the military base, where they're still talking to Farid, but the sun is going down. So Farid decides he's just gonna detonate the explosives that I didn't know they ever set up, so the soldiers have to go in and arrest him. So they're taking Alias to the hospital and then this dude gets overpowered by an 8 year old and he jumps out of a moving vehicle without the driver noticing. Is this kid part vampire? That's the only explanation I can think of of how he has done any of this. Um, what's the point of handcuffing him if he's missing a hand? Anyway, this stupid kid starts running towards the plane full of vampires and sees his mom. She flips out and starts running towards him and I guess he had the detonator in his teddy bear and blows up the plane with him. If it was programmed to this detonator, why didn't it blow up when he blew the door off? For some reason, the soldiers decide to let someone who they think is a terrorist run up to check on the kid. And he's somehow still alive, even though he was standing way too close to the explosion to have survived. This movie and its logic, I swear. This movie is all over the place and keeps making up issues in order to make the tension last. I'm fine with the whole terrorist thing and the crazy guy wanting to become a vampire, but then they have the plane lose oxygen, start a fire, and someone lets the vampires out. And Elias is one of the luckiest kids I have seen in a movie in a long time. 
and it's all just so they could have something to make the main vampire more sympathetic. Otherwise, he's just constantly in danger and gets out of it through plot convenience. This was made in Germany and dubbed in English. The voice acting is fine at some times and atrocious at other times. Harry Brosmere, I think that's how you pronounce it, is pretty good as Nadia. She can act nervous and kind of standoffish in the beginning, and she does a great job acting out the slow transformation into a full vampire and losing control of herself at times. And her dubbed actress does an okay job with the voiceover. Case Seti is okay as Farid. His body language is believable, but his voiceover actor is hit and miss. There are times when he can show emotion, but more often than not, he sounds flat and like he's just reading through the lines. Karl Kosh is good as Alias, but his voiceover actor is terrible. He has no emotion in his voice at all, and there are times when he pauses at random spots in his lines and it just throws the whole flow of the scene off. The visual effects are great. The vampires actually look really cool and are the saving grace of the movie. I like that they look almost like a Norse Veratu style, with their pointy ears and that all their teeth are sharp. I also like that they relied more on practical effects than CGI. It really added to the visual appeal of the movie. It's just too bad they had such an annoying kid that kind of ruined it. Don't forget to do the YouTube stuff, and thanks for watching.